So that was study on E and variation by Johann Caspar Meritz. And follow the lesson for free, but if you're interested, you can pick up the free sheet music, and there's a link for that in the description. So the original title of this work is Exercise on the E String, and in his method book, Meritz has like six versions of the piece. So I've just kind of taken the first two and made them into like a study in variation. So let's talk about uh, a little bit about the musicality of the piece and what we're going for, and then uh, we'll do a walkthrough of the piece and talk about some of the technical challenges and options available to you. So really nice little theme all in the thumb here. So you can you can just practice that that melody on its own with just the thumb. That would be all the down stem notes. And I would even use your thumb on the, those upper strings just to kind of keep it all separate. You could use I am you could use I on those notes. It doesn't it doesn't matter that much, but I play it all with my thumb just for consistency. So, you know, practice that on its own and get the phrasing and the legato the way you want it, nice and smooth. And then add the upper note in, but just make sure your ear and your thumb is still focused on creating a nice legato line in the bass there. So I'm using PI the whole time. That's what Merritt re recommends and that's what I recommend, but there's, you know, PM would also be acceptable. So would PI, PM, PI, PM. Those are all acceptable fingerings. I use PI the entire time, just like the merits. So the main thing is to stay focused on that thumb. Um, don't play the I finger too loud, just let it, let it be there, but really focus on that lower melody. And I would back away from those. They're not even really melodic material, it's more just arpeggios happening. But nevertheless, um, they do sound a little melodic, so you can play it, but not too loud. crescendo through there. If you have trouble with that fourth finger, just make sure your finger, your hand is aligned. If I'm even slightly out of alignment, I can't even reach that note. Do you see that? But if I just bring my knuckle in just like a little tiny bit, I can easily reach that note or further. So just make sure your, your knuckles are parallel with the strings and that you're aligned for that. And then um, I recommend playing the both pieces as one combined set. So after a little fermata there, you start up, and I'm doing PMI. Now the music is exactly the same. The, the, the bass line and everything is exactly the same. The only difference is instead of playing one note on the upper one upper E, you're playing two. So nothing has changed musically. You want to phrase that lower voice as smoothly as possible while just having two fingers moving in there. And of course you can play all this much slower, but you'll find that um, your fingers don't actually have to move faster, you're just throwing an extra finger in. In the end, your thumb is moving the same speed as before, so is the eye finger to some extent. so important that you phrase that music and you, and you shape it a little bit because otherwise you get, you know, you don't want a lot of machine gun fire, and, you know, annoying the listener from the upper fingers. So just keep those relatively soft and focus on that melody. Careful, um, you, I made a little mistake there, you, you heard that. Um, it's a good little study in like thumb accuracy when you're moving on, on all between all these different strings. So really nice study for that and just in, in terms of the piece, it's a nice little opportunity to play a nice bass 
or thumb melody while keeping that upper voice you know relatively soft but because it's open strings it turns out to be relatively easy although um, can be exciting and you can bring it to much faster speeds if you want to make it a little bit of a showpiece so i hope you enjoy it 